You and your family wake up to an emergency broadcast. The United States is now in a state of emergency. Riots erupt, statues are torn down, and the government collapses under the weight of escalating violence. Food shortages and rampant looting lead to widespread panic. Clashes between armed forces break out across the country. Would America ever be able to recover from this kind of devastation? What would happen to the government? And how could you survive the chaos? Well, before we answer that, let's rewind and uncover how we got here. We asked ChatGPT to research and predict how another civil war might unfold in the United States. Now, keep in mind, GPT is just an LLM, a large language model. It's not a sophisticated artificial intelligence, so this simulation isn't perfect. But stick around, we'll also share some survival tips for staying alive in a lawless America. If you want to be prepared for this and other not-so-unlikely scenarios, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Six months before the war, the polarization of America has reached new heights. Political speeches have become increasingly inflammatory, with leaders portraying the opposition as existential threats to the nation's future. Is America headed for a civil war? Partisan news outlets amplify the polarization by presenting biased interpretations of events and selectively reporting facts. Making things worse, people only get one side of the story on social media. But we already know that. Algorithms designed to maximize engagement increasingly push users toward content that reinforces their existing beliefs. The period leading up to the American Civil War in the 1850s saw a similar intensification of divisions. And although this time the issue isn't about slavery, racism is still a big part of the growing civil unrest. At this point, the best you can do is to stay informed with a reliable source of news. This means you should also look for media outlets outside of social networks. Try to analyze how both sides are spreading information. As the presidential election approaches, accusations of voter fraud and foreign interference spread like wildfire. Political rhetoric and misinformation amplify distrust in the electoral process, leading to widespread calls for investigations and recounts. Protests become more frequent and more intense. Issues like racial injustice, police brutality, and economic disparities lead to massive demonstrations. And these protests often encounter counter-protests, resulting in violent confrontations. The atmosphere becomes charged with tension as both sides view each other not just as opponents, but as enemies. Pay attention to warnings from local authorities and independent news outlets. Being aware of potential hotspots for violence can help you avoid dangerous situations. One week before the war, secessionist movements begin to pop up across the country. States and regions disillusioned with the federal government start declaring their independence. Leaders are torn between using force to prevent the breakup of the country and seeking diplomatic solutions to address the demands of the secessionist states. Supporters of secession see it as a legitimate exercise of self-determination and a way to reclaim their rights and freedoms. Opponents view it as a dangerous path to anarchy and national disintegration. During this time of high tension and violence, it's crucial to keep a low profile. Move quietly and cautiously near conflict areas, avoiding sudden movements that could draw attention. Or worse, gunfire. As the crisis deepens, divisions within the military and law enforcement become inevitable. Citizens in these institutions begin to take sides based on their political beliefs and regional loyalties. Some units refuse to obey orders from the federal government, while others remain loyal, leading to a fragmentation of authority and control. This means more violent confrontations. For civilians, the division within the military and law enforcement poses a significant threat. 
The breakdown of law and order now leads to an increase in crime and violence. And with different factions fighting for control, civilians find themselves caught in the crossfire. Familiarize yourself with escape routes and safe zones. Knowing where to go and how to get there if your current location becomes unsafe will become crucial for your survival. As the federal government loses its authority, paramilitary groups and militias begin to mobilize. These groups, often driven by extremist ideologies or local loyalties, take advantage of the chaos to push their agendas and assert control over territory. Clashes between rival groups from the same state become common, contributing to a growing humanitarian crisis. Civilians face displacement, shortages of food, water, and medical supplies. Human rights abuses are widespread. Make sure to prep a basic emergency kit containing everything you'll need to survive. Food, water, and first aid supplies. And steer clear of crowded areas like markets, transportation hubs, and government buildings. All potential targets for an attack. The situation now escalates into a full-scale civil war as opposing sides engage in guerrilla warfare, terrorist attacks, and conventional battles for control of territory and resources. It's an ongoing cycle of violence and retaliation with no clear end in sight. Refugee camps overflow with displaced citizens and humanitarian organizations struggle to provide aid in the middle of the chaos. Make sure to keep important documents like passports, driver's licenses, and emergency contact information on you at all times. These will be crucial for identification and for getting help in case you're injured or separated from your loved ones. And before you go any further, get a weapon or something to use for self-defense. Even if you're a pacifist, you should be able to fight for your life if necessary. As the conflict drags on, the economic impact starts to show. Businesses across the nation are forced to shut their doors. Supply chains, which once provided a steady flow of goods and services, break down completely. As transportation networks are disrupted and production facilities are abandoned or destroyed, basic necessities are now scarce. The stock market crashes and the value of the dollar spirals downward. Prices for everyday goods skyrocket, placing them out of reach for the average citizen. Unemployment soars as companies face mass layoffs. Those who still have jobs find their wages are now not enough to buy what they need. Communities that used to trust and help each other are now splitting apart, fighting for resources and living in fear. Similarities to the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s become apparent, and Americans face poverty and despair on a scale previously unimaginable. This war could last months or years, and it will be hard to survive alone. Building relationships with your neighbors and community members will be a priority. Sharing resources, information, and assistance will improve the group's chances for survival. The end of active conflict marks the start of an equally challenging phase, the reconstruction. As they celebrate their triumph, the winners face the monumental task of rebuilding a nation devastated by war. Infrastructure is in ruins. Roads, schools, and hospitals need to be reconstructed from the ground up. And it'll be a long road ahead for the government to regain the trust of their citizens. The Civil War has cemented the distrust of political leaders and the disillusionment with our institutions. Proving transparency and accountability will be critical to rebuilding trust. At this stage, you should still be prioritizing getting food, water, and medical supplies. Traditional systems may still be disrupted, so explore alternative means of transportation, communication, and sourcing food. The long-term effects of the Civil War will cast a long shadow over the nation. Social, economic, and psychological scars will affect generations. 
Rebuilding trust, healing wounds, and addressing systematic injustices become ongoing struggles. The new government should promote reconciliation, economic development, and mental health support as critical steps to the nation's long-term recovery. Another American civil war would be a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. And while this scenario might be hypothetical, many people argue we're already living in the first stages of it. The problem is the conflict doesn't necessarily begin and end in the United States. As tensions across the planet continue to escalate, the possibility of another world war seems more likely than ever. How would it unfold? And how could you survive it? Well, check out our video, AI Predicts World War III, right here on How to Survive.